Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. We're going to talk a little bit more about the report that the prosecutors showed to the survivors on Thursday. And coming out of that report, we have another bit of information that is absolutely ridiculous. And it just goes to show that the Department of Justice itself is a shit show. These people, they don't, they don't give a damn about anything. All they care about is increasing their power and pushing whatever sort of political narrative that their bosses inject in their stupid heads. We have a report that one of Jeffrey Epstein's attorneys dated one of the prosecutors in the trial. So how in the world can anyone look at this and think that these gals got a fair shake? The survivors got absolutely screwed by the prosecutors in Florida and the federal prosecutors as a whole. And now let's remember what we're talking about here in the first case. We're talking about young high school girls from Palm Beach mostly. And this scumbag was able to just walk and skate and get off. And you mean to tell me That we're just supposed to ignore all of his connections? We're supposed to ignore all of the relationships that his lawyers have had? No pun intended. And we're just supposed to ignore the fact that he was so close to such a power broker like Bill Clinton? Now remember, we're talking about 2008 still. Bill Clinton was still a big time power player on the scene. And Hillary Clinton was getting ready to have a job in Barack Obama's administration. These are very, very powerful people that were close to Jeffrey Epstein. And at every turn, he was able to gain the system. And he was able to be afforded a certain set of rights and favors that normal people would never, ever, ever, ever be afforded if they were caught up in the same circumstances. And the new information here about uh, one of his attorneys dating a prosecutor is just, it's just more nonsense to add to the top of the nonsense mountain. How in the hell is a prosecutor who dated one of his attorneys not recused from the case? How is this person even still working on the case And how does the Department of Justice find in their shitty ass internal review that just a couple of mistakes were made? Now, I don't think the Department of Justice expected the, the outcry over their information that they released, right? I, I don't think that they expected there to be this much of a blowback, but what they need to understand is people have had enough and we're no longer going to just sit by silently while the Department of Justice drags its feet and does not pursue the people that need to be pursued. We'll be here every single day. We'll be talking about it. We'll be raising hell. And they're not going to be able to ignore us. One voice, sure. Millions of us, impossibility. So we just have to keep the pressure on and we have to keep asking these kinds of questions. How the hell is a prosecutor who is supposedly going after Jeffrey Epstein, how is he not recusing himself or being replaced by his superiors knowing that he had a relationship with one of Epstein's lawyers? It is ridiculous that this guy was not recused. All right, so our article today is from the New York Post. Headline, Epstein's attorney dated the prosecutor in trial where he got a sweetheart deal. I mean, how is that not looked upon by the Department of Justice as something that is just unbelievably unacceptable? You can't have this guy as one of the prosecutors while at the same time Dating one of Epstein's lawyers? There's no, what do you think? There's no conflict of interest there? How do we know that this dude isn't throwing sweetheart deals? Many of men have fallen under the spell of a beautiful woman. 
This article was posted, excuse me, authored by Paula Frolik. It was a sweetheart deal that has baffled the world. How, in 2008, Jeffrey Epstein was allowed to plead guilty to a lesser felony prostitution charge, register as a sex offender, and serve just 13 months in a county jail, where he could come and go during the day, despite several underage survivors testifying he raped them. So, right off the bat, you say to yourself, what in the hell? This guy scored this sweetheart deal, while at the same time one of the prosecutors was dating one of his attorneys? Right on the right off the bat, that looks bad. And that's before you even add in all of the other stuff, right? So again, all these little nuggets, all these little pieces of information, all of these little puzzle pieces, when they're fitted together, they start they start to draw a much darker picture than if we were just looking at these things as one offs, right? Every look, one offs happen in shit in, in, in cases, right? Every now and then there's a coincidence, but This case is littered with all sorts of shit that is just completely and utterly backwards. The Department of Justice has been almost complicit in all of this, in my opinion. And there needs to be some repercussions for people who are involved. I have, I'm very, I'm very um, strong in that belief. It's now been revealed that one of Epstein's defense attorneys previously dated one of the top prosecutors on the deal. <laughs> I don't even, honestly, I don't even know what to say about that right now. It's just so, it's, it's so sad, I guess I should say, that the Department of Justice has sat on this information for 10 years. They've known this stuff for 10 years, and it's just coming out now. They're an embarrassment, and Bill Barr is the biggest embarrassment of all. I know a lot of you out there listening are, you know, under the impression that Bill Barr is pursuing people on behalf of justice, and that is not the case. Bill Barr is a political hack. He's a retread. He's been in Washington, D.C. forever. He is exactly what Trump was talking about when he talked about swamp monsters, but yet somehow Trump brings Barr in. It's all a shell game. I don't trust any of these people. The last politician I trusted was Ron Paul. Lillian Sanchez was a member of Epstein's defense team in 2008 when he was facing a potential federal indictment and life imprisonment for sexually abusing dozens of girls between 1999 and 2007. I mean, I know it's an uncomfortable question to ask and all, but did this relationship have any sway on what Mr. Menchel did? Did it have any, were there any, um, was there any pressure by Ms. Sanchez to get a favorable deal for her client? Look, we know that stuff like that occurs. We know that people like Menchel who get caught up in a relationship with a beautiful young woman can easily be manipulated. Now, again, I'm not saying that occurred. I don't know. I wasn't there. I wasn't hanging out with them while they were talking about, you know, whatever it is they're talking about. But I think that when you look at everything that went on in this case, there are so many unanswered questions that we can't leave any avenue unexplored. Sanchez had also dated Matthew Menchel, one of the prosecutors who worked on the plea deal. So... This this Miss Sanchez has uh, quite the uh, bit of uh, dating going on in her uh, realm of uh, work. Me personally, yeah, I don't think it's a good idea to be uh, dipping the old pen in company ink, if you get my drift. And that's in uh, any sort of situation. Never mind a job like this where you're dealing with serious, serious matters. We're dealing with... Jeffrey Epstein, for Lord's sake, and this lady, who is one of his attorneys, is having an affair with a prosecutor and uh, someone involved in the plea deal. How many people is this lady having an affair with? Is it all a coincidence, or was she targeting these people to date? 
The romance came to light after the Justice Department Office of Professional Responsibility, OPR, issued a report this week slamming the Florida prosecutors for poor judgment in the pedo pervs deal. Poor judgment is absolutely a understatement, okay? Poor judgment. This was dereliction of duty. I got your poor judgment, as Tony Soprano would say. I got your poor judgment right here in my ass. I mean, are you kidding me right now? Sanchez and Manchel dated in 2003 when they were both employed at the Southern District of Florida's U.S. Attorney's Office. They later broke up, but never disclosed the relationship while both worked on the Epstein deal. Bam, right there. That alone should get the deal thrown out, folks. I'm telling you right now, with all of this stuff that's coming out, the 11th Circuit Court, uh, uh, Circuit uh, Appeals Court is going to have a field day with this shit. I said earlier that I thought it was a better than good chance that the uh, non-prosecution agreement, agreement gets overturned. I, I'm accelerating that. I'm saying it's a, it's a very good chance at this point. Because the 11th Circuit, uh, Circuit Court of Appeals is going to see all of this information too. They're going to have everything in front of them. And they're going to make their decision based on everything that has been presented to them. And everything that could be found by their clerks or whatever the hell they have going on. But the point is, this is really bad for the prosecutor's office. And while they might not face sanctions by the Department of Justice, I have a funny feeling the 11th Circuit is going to come down hard with an iron fist on these people. The report says Manchel had left the office before the Epstein case was resolved. Menchel told Justice Department investigators during the probe that his relationship with Sanchez had no impact on his handling of the case. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Had no handling at all. You're just, you could never fall to the charms of a woman, huh, Mr. Menchel? You're just better than the rest of us, obviously. Give me a break. We all know that Jeffrey Epstein was running a honey trap. This could have just been another portion of that honey trap, another way to pierce the veil and get somebody on the inside. What, where we don't think that that Epstein and his people are that devious? Come on, folks, this is exactly what they do. This is in their wheelhouse. So Mr. Menchel here, he should be brought under oath and he should have to talk about what occurred because I have a sneaking suspicion that he has not been too forthright about his tryst with Miss Sanchez here. Letting a well-connected billionaire get away with child rape and international sex trafficking isn't poor judgment. It is a disgusting failure, Senator Ben Sass said in a statement released on Thursday. Americans ought to be enraged. Epstein should be rotting behind bars today. But the Just Us Department failed Epstein survivors at every turn. Well, Mr. Sass, I'm here to report to you, sir. The Americans are enraged. And guess what? You're in a position to do something about it. So do you want to become a hero in this story? Do you want to become somebody that both sides of the aisle can look up to like the old days when we actually actually had a political system that worked? If that's who you want to be, Mr. Sass, now's the time. Step forward, demand hearings, and demand that these people be brought to justice. Epstein was found hanging in his cell at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in Manhattan last August while awaiting trial on new sex trafficking charges. You see how the Post doesn't say, oh, he committed suicide. And if you notice, certain outlets don't come out and say, well, he committed suicide. They'll say found hanging in his cell or found dead in his cell. And I think that that is good quality journalism because at the end of the day, we don't know what happened in that cell. So to assert that he definitely um, hung himself or to assert that he was definitely murdered, we just don't have all of those details yet. But it is something that needs to be discussed, obviously. Now... I think that Ben Sass getting sassy about all of this is a definite good thing. It's a step in the right direction, but they need to be more forceful about it. The Congress, the Senate, they need to come out and they need to take a stand against this shit and let people like Epstein and those who were running this operation behind the scenes, those who were working with Epstein and those who were financing Epstein, 
that this shit is never going to happen again in this country. And if you took part in this, if you enabled this, if you were involved with Jeffrey Epstein financially, then you are in the crosshairs as well. That is a message that needs to be sent. It needs to be sent strongly and it needs to be sent now. If you'd like to contact me, you could do that at Bobby Capucci at protonmail.com. That's B O B B Y C A P U C C I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B O B B Y underscore C A P U C C I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. To those of you who have donated to the PayPal, thank you very much. All right, folks, we'll be back later on and we'll pick it back up then. <laughs>